for effort versus lore here at the GSL Code. And as Calder mentioned before, the winner of that previous match will go on to face whoever plays against, or whoever wins against Flying versus Stefano, which will be our final best of three of the night. Yeah, I feel this is actually the game that most people are waiting for. Of course, in the third series today, we are going to see Nesty play, which is also very exciting. But Stefano, being a foreigner here in Korea, is always giving you a little bit of special attention, I feel. Yeah. But before we go into those two matches, we have two Koreans playing. And it is going to be Effort versus Lure, Casper versus ESF once again. To end up in the second round, of, let's talk about their road a little bit later. I feel looking at those two players that Effort is the one who's probably the favorite. Yeah, Lure has been looking better as of late. Yep. He's still just not quite on the level of accomplishment as Effort just yet. Um, and I think that he has a lot to prove. If he can take out Effort here, I think everybody has to take him a little bit more seriously right now. Because of all of his past failures, when you look at his win rate, he's 4-8. and eight, And that's just... That's not something you expect to see from a player who's about to go into the up and downs or who could potentially get into the final round of Kodai. To be fair, he was able to take down a Jadon with a 2-1 in the first round. That was a really good series. But I'm excited to see him in the second CVP in this Kodai season. This is going to be a good one. And we'll talk about it during the game too, but one of the things that I have to mention still is that if Lua is able to defeat Effort, he will face off against DRG in the third round, which means that he would have played three Z ZVPs in a row here in Korea. Yeah. Very true. <laughs> and we'll see how he does in this one. The map, map number one, is on Aqualon Flats here. As we've said before, Effort strongly the favorite. But Laura may have a trick or two up his sleeve. Blue looking sharp here, and let's see if he can beat Effort. Effort, of course, a strong player for CJ Enters. Aquilon Flats, map number one here at the GSL Code. We are in the second round, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is our second uh, series of the day. We have CJ Enters Effort versus MVP Lure. A Zerg versus Protoss match. Map number one is Loader. Let's jump into the game here at the GSL Code with Colin Wolf. To the top left in orange, we have the player for CJ Antus, the Casper Zerk, it is. CJ Antus Effort! The lowrider Zerg likes to sit low in the chair. Yeah. But he's improving his posture a little bit, yeah, bit by bit. He certainly is. Bottom right, we have his opponent in the green, Call of Hope. We have the MVP Protoss player, his ideas. MVP Luo. They set a trap. Might lure you into yeah. something. <laughs> Lou looking good in here, having the orange keys, which match his uh, color, the color of his collar, perfectly. Yeah, you know, I have to say, Lure looks pretty good in the MVP jersey. I, we were talking about this briefly yesterday. We feel that the MVP one is not as good as some of the past designs they have had, yep. but he looks good in it. I don't really like the uh, new colors, but I have to admit that Lua is definitely pulling that off. Yeah. One thing that Lua also pulled off was a victory in his first match in Kode. He was able to win against Jadong with 2-1. That was the first Zerg vs. Protoss that he played this season. And now he's in his second. He's up against Effort and starts here with a very normal build. Goes for the pool at 14. 15 actually. I feel like Lore is very similar to his teammates Finale and Tails in his playstyle. He has really specific builders most of the time when you see him play. You don't see late game out of him all too often. The thing with Lure is that he has actually a pretty decent record in uh, Zerg vs. Protoss. Not too many games, 15 in total. He won 10 of them, so that is pretty uh, okay. On the other hand, we have Effort, who definitely does get a lot more attention than Lure because he is also playing in Pro League. In the first round of Code A, he was winning in the ZBZ against Bial with very aggressive builds. Effort had no problems to advance, took two games, didn't lose, lose a single map, finds himself against the Protoss now. And Effort, as I said, has a few more games under his belt on televised matches. He uh, was winning 21 matches, lost only 9, most of those games being played in Pro League. So I'm pretty excited to see what exactly he can do against Lori. Yeah, same here. This is going to be a match that is just, it proves a lot. 
for lore more than it does for effort because effort already has a big starcraft 1 career under his belt and is already doing very well in starcraft 2 but lore on the other hand is somebody who is you know just he's trying to make his career still i feel third base for effort in a very quick manner before even the four minute mark and at the left side of the map rather than taking it at the slightly closer expansion yeah, and uh, on the other hand, we now have the cancel here. Quick block to make sure that the Zerkings don't get into the main base. So Lua is really determined to deny scouting as much as possible against the Overlord, of course. He has nothing at this point, but he will have the Cybernetics Core fairly soon, and then we will see Sentry and Stalker to deal with the Overlords. Yes. When he sees that third base, as he's already done, he's got a few thoughts going through his head. What type of build do I want to do that may punish this? Or do I take my own third very quickly myself to try to, to catch up? I think we're going to see, based on Lure's playstyle we've seen in the past, an attack rather than an expand as a response to this. Oh, that was close. Yeah, the Zerklings are not able to take down the probe, nor able to sneak in here. The cannon is definitely enough. Here comes the cybernetic score, of course, the first thing that's going to be started is the warp gate research, but now the question is what kind of tech will we see? On maps like this, we have seen a lot of openings with robotics. You can also go for the Stargate, which is getting a lot more popular these days against Zerg. Phoenix openings in general have been doing a lot of damage in the early game. But Lua decides to start his attack upgrade before he goes into the tank. Yeah, and you know what's also really interesting is he showed gases at the actually showed a gas uh, one of them. <laughs> that was a nice micro battle. Sorry to cut you off there, yeah. but we had really some nice micro going on by both players. Effort trying to pull the Zerglings back, Lua trying to get into better positions with the Zealot, and the Zealot gets all the kills really well done and holds the Zalnaga Watchtower. Yeah, he does hold that, which is really important for about 30 more seconds, but the more important thing is, of course, that he keeps the Zealot alive. Uh, he shows two, or he shows one gas in the natural. He takes both of the gas in the natural, which is very rarely seen ever. And now, the truth may be revealed. This is actually going to be really close. Oh, he sees the Nexus regardless, but he does not get to see the gases. This is really cool because if he hadn't seen the Nexus with this Overlord, he would not have seen the gases. Then he wouldn't know what's going on. He would think a third gas instead of thinking only two gases. So this is nice little trick to play by Lord. Unfortunately for him, though, he scouted. Yeah. Rocks are being attacked now, a wall set off at the third base, the third tier will help Lua quite a lot. On this map, it's a little bit easier to hold it. This is really great, I, I really like this build by Lua. It didn't work, but it's a really interesting idea. Effort is now going into the lair tech and getting a lot of gases too, so he is really setting a just putting things on the next level now, making yeah. sure that he gets his speed, which is, by the way, really late in comparison. Also, the Roach Warren not before the 8-minute mark, which is something that we rarely see. Usually, most Zerg players are really determined to get the Roach Warren out a lot faster because they don't really know if there's going to be an attack. But with everything that Effort scouted, he knew that there was not too much aggression coming. Yep, that's very true. Uh, this is why scouting is so important in this matchup. You can live or die by it, really. Robotics finishes up here for Lure and his plus one finishes at the exact same time. He just needs to get some good scouting information now of what Effort has planned next. That's why he starts the Observer now. He needs to know, are you taking a fourth? What tech are you going for? Are you going to try to cut Roaches out of your build and go for fast investors? Or are you going to make some Roaches and try to pressure me at my newly taken third? He needs to know what's going on. Even making a second Observer, in fact, right now, instead of going into Immortals because he really wants to know. He's not going to waste any gas on uh, Immortals that aren't going to be Zealot is still up at the front, four kills under his belt because of the Zerglings that he took out earlier. Infestation pit tech for effort. I could have seen him go Mutalist. Yeah. But he goes into the Infestation pit now, which is the safe option, more long-term oriented than Mutalist tech. Yeah, when you go Mutas, if your opponent has a fast third up, Chances are that he's going to have the infrastructure in place to defend you with that fast third. Once he sees that you're going from you, he'll have cannons, he'll have enough units, he'll have had that third base pay off enough to where you can build up the stalker count. And he's going for that observer as well. So this is, like you said, the safer route. And I like this route better than the efforts choosing, in this case, with the fast third. Overseer trying to get all the information that he needs. The stalkers are there. Sees the tag, sees the second forge. Plus one attack has been started here, plus two attack, my bad. And also the blink upgrade. Effort decides to go into a fourth base after this. So, not a lot of aggression going on by these two players. A lot of scouting for both sides. And then 
the measures to go into the late game. Get the economy up, try to get the first few spine crawlers going to make sure that an attack at this point would not take down effort. He tries to bridge the time that he uh, can, that he needs to get into a Hive later on. Yeah, he knows that it's going to be very difficult for him to attack either of these locations with his Roaches and Lings because the walls, the cannons, all the sentries that are there, and Lure not wasting a second with those, uh, those spells, making sure he can be ready to defend. Seeing the second forge is really important for effort because now he knows, all right, upgrades are, for my opponent are going to be just as good as mine, if not better. And in this case, they're going to be much better. So he's got to be ready for this, and he needs to make sure that he doesn't take an engagement until his upgrades are also ready, unless he has the better composition by far. Lua's position is actually not a bad one if you look at what he has. And uh, at his tech, we talked about the upgrades already, but we have him also in with the Twilight, uh, sorry, Templar Archive now. A lot of gateways, really gearing up for an attack. And he wants, of course, to attack before the Broodlords are. That's usually what you're going for. You never want to face this Broodlord composition, and Protoss players have different strategies how to deal with this. We see a lot of Immortal attacks, two base all-ins, but now on three bases, you want to hit before the Greater Spire is completed and the Broodlords are morphing. This is like the best timing, as late as possible. The ideal situation is you start, just start your attack when those Broodlords are started to morph. That is the best thing that you can do because it gives you the time to build up the strongest army and then you hit and take down everything when the Broodlords are finished. They don't have any support and they are down. Yeah, it's true, but before the Broodlords even get out, Effort wants to be aggressive here. But this is not an engagement he can win directly. He was going to try to pick off some of the Zealots, perhaps, with some Fungals. He even sees and he's like, you know what, this is just not worth losing my Infestors for. If I lose my Infestors, I can't use my Broodlords like I want to. I'm just going to sit back and be patient. I have a fourth base. Plus two, plus two nearly completed. And now the Warp Prism also getting uh, warped in. So. Effort sees all this. He sees the army, he sees the position, he sees Lua posturing on the map, and he knows, well, there is a good chance of Yuno being aggressive, so I need to get more spine crawlers. I need to get my defense up. And that's what we see. 10 spine crawlers, 11 now being built. Hive is nearly completed, as is the Spire. Great timing here for him. Not only Adrenal Glance, but also the Greater Spire will be started in a second. And this is the time where the Zerg is really endangered, where Lua has to make his move. And that's why we see those 11 spine crawlers going off at the third base, because he knows he's going to the Zealots trying to, to find uh, some surface area on these Lings. The Lings running in a little bit awkwardly here. They have to get away as soon as possible. And Lure, for a moment, decides he wants to chase the Lings, but this is exactly what Effort wants. He wants to buy more time for those Spine Crawlers to finish 18 Roaches on the way. Those are going to be a great buffer with the Fungals, and the Lings are still there. They're going for that counterattack. The army size is heavily in favor of Lure, and here he comes. The uh, Investors are there going for the Fungals. The Zealots get heavy. through. Yeah. But this is a really strong army for Lure, and he's trying to bust through here. The great Greater Spire is even done, and most of his opponent's spines are now gone. The spines are gone, the roaches though pop out in the perfect moment, he's got the Infested Terrans. A great engagement by Effort, neutralizing the Zealots and the Zealot Heavy Army. He needs to bring his Infested Terrans though, he's not fighting with those, and he definitely needs them. And now suddenly all those Infestors are exposed, a lot of them taken down by Lua, and those Archons at the front, they are leading the charge once again. Both of them dead now, but the rest of the army is still going strong. We still have two Immortals left. The Immortals doing a ton of damage. Needs to fall back. The warp in potential for Lore is extremely good. And those Infestors are out of energy. He has to rely on the Lings and Roaches that are rallying out of those hatcheries. But I feel like Lore's army may just be reinforcing too quickly. He's about to have plus three as well. Effort, on the other hand, is reinforcing with the Zerglings, and those alone will not really help them. What really helps them, though, is that Adrenal Glance and plus two attack for them is completed. So now they are a lot more stronger than they were before. Lua is still behind in overall supply, but in army supply, it's only a very, very small gap between the two of them. Yep, the Archon's doing some great damage behind the Zealots. The Ling's not able to do a whole lot, lot but the Roaches come in. Plus three about to finish here for Lore. The spine crawlers here, if they root, Lore is not going to be able to continue this attack much longer. Well, yep. he has the Stalkers there, and he's focusing them down one by one. The extra damage to the building's really shining. And yeah. now plus three attack is done. Where I think he can pass through. Or Lord, he I, has I, no Lava or, Wolf. Yeah, he just is, have, he's made too many links here. 
Oh, he's not too many. He just oh, blinks wow. are so cost inefficient. Great blink, great blink. Blinking on top of the high ground, taking down those infestors. Really important. The infestor count down to six. They're yeah, trying the to get down the ramp. on the ramp. He gets a fungal on the zealots, but he loses some infestors. And Lord now ahead in supply. The archons are still alive. Plus three is done for him. No resources left. Well, a few, but not enough to get the boot lord count that he would need to win this game. It looks like Lua can take this series. He's already destroying the natural, and he will move into the main base and take down the hive. GG. GG as effort leaves the game. Lua with a very, very strong attack. Great you know, performance here. I, at first, when I was watching this fight, I saw Effort fungle all of the Zealots, which made Lure's Zealot heavy army look useless. But then he warped in Stalkers only, and all the energy for the Investors was gone. And he was breaking a lot of Lings to reinforce with his Roaches. And Lings cost a lot of Larva. He's also fighting an army that has still a lot of Zealots with Archon support, so his Lings didn't account very much. Then his finds didn't have any support. He was out of Investor energy, and Lure just pushed all the way through. Blue had a very, very strong army. We've seen a lot of Zerg players fall to this composition. The Arakans at the front tanking a lot of damage, doing damage to the Zerglings. With the upgrade lead that Lua had, the Lings alone were just not enough to hold this force off. The Investors trying their best, but then a good blink by Lua going in, taking them down. The newly built Investors don't have enough energy to get all those fungals out that he needed to buy himself time. He didn't even really have the resources to get Corruptus out. He was never in a position where he had the time and the resources to do it. Then Lava was lacking. Well played by Lua, hitting the timing that he needed. Effort holding off for a long time, but in the end, it's the Protoss who wins the game. Yep. Lure taking a lead here, and he is turning his overall win rate around right now, hitting a lot of his good matchup. Protoss versus Zerg. Map number two is Daybreak, a classic map. Can Effort tie up the series? Will he be able to go into the late game and get those roots out? Or is Lure's unit composition and his timing just a little bit too much for him? Let's find out. This is the GSL Code. I am Wolf. With me is Kaldor. Let's load up Daybreak.